Hey, my most amazing Splendiferous art nerds. Today we're going to be talking about the new Faber-Castell Albrecht Durer watercolor markers. These things are really cool and I had the amazing opportunity to work with Faber-Castell at Hands-On Creativity this past weekend. So I got to be hands-on with these watercolor markers all weekend long and I cannot wait to share with you guys everything I've learned them about them. So if you're interested in brand new watercolor markers, you're just going to have to keep on watching. So this isn't your average unbox and swatch video. We did our unboxing and our swatching for the 10 color set on a live stream. I'm going to link that in the description down below. If you guys don't attend my live streams, I really got to say, you really got to make time to do it. They're a lot of fun and it is a great chance for me to answer your questions directly. And my live streams are Friday nights. Those are my power hour art streams. And they usually start at 8 p.m. CST. And you guys can find information about when my live streams are going to occur by checking out my community tab here on YouTube. So in that Faber-Castell Unbox and Swatch stream, we took a look at the 10-piece set. And these are the colors from the 10 piece set. We're going to go by the color numbers rather than the color names. So in the 10 piece set, you receive a yellow, an orange, a red, a pink, a cool blue. I mean, I'm sorry, a warm blue, a cool blue, a Viridian style green, a sap green. So a cool green, a warm green, a dark brown, and a black, i.e. 109, 113, 121, 125, 120, 110, 264, 170, 175, and 199. For the purposes of this review, I'm not going to refer to things by their color names. I'm going to refer to them by their color numbers. And the reason I'm going to do that is all professional grade Faber-Castell art supplies, so the Polychromos, the Pit Pins, the Albert Durer watercolor pencils, and the watercolor markers, they all utilize this color numbering system. So a 114 in the Polychromos is going to be a 114 for the Albert Durer markers, it's going to be a 114 for the watercolor pencils, and for the Pit Pins, which allows you to very easily color match, which makes Faber-Castell products ideal for mixed media applications, like some of the tutorials I'm going to show you guys. So we've already talked about the 10 color set um, several times and I've actually created several pieces with the 10 color set and I want to share those with you guys today and worry not we actually have tutorials coming up for all of the pieces I'm about to show you. Those will be coming up in the next few weeks or you can join me at patreon.com slash soup to get them early. So first we have an illustration inked with Faber-Castell pit pins and colored with the Faber-Castell watercolor markers and the Al Albrecht Durer watercolor pencils. We also have a piece very similar uh, inked with Faber-Castell Sanguine and then re-inked later on in the tutorial with Faber-Castell Walnut and this is the Albrecht Durer watercolor markers, and then a little bit of pit pen applied as watercolor. And then, because I'm just seasonally minded like that, this tutorial has already been released. And this is a tutorial where we use the watercolor pencils, polychromos color pencils, and pit pins on Strathmore's toned blue mixed media paper. That tutorial is already out, so I'll link it in the description down below. Make sure you check for it. We also have this really lovely piece of my two MCs, aka main characters, Naomi and Kara, from my wonderful watercolor webcomic, 7-Inch Kara, which you guys can read for freezies at 7inchkara.com or 7inchkara.tumblr.com. And this was done using the Albrecht Durer watercolor markers. It was done using pit pins. It was done using the polychromos color pencils. And this tutorial is going to be coming up soon. 
But y'all, if you are an art nerd, if you are supporting me over the Patreon at patreon.com slash soup, you guys have access to all of these tutorials. Already, this sort of support really helps me continue to do what I do here on this channel, and it means the world to me. So you guys can head on over to patreon.com slash soup, and for just $2 a month, you will not only gain early access to tutorials like this, but you'll also gain access to my making comics and intermediate cl comics classes, as well as my alcohol marker classes. So that is a great way to support what I'm doing here on this channel and help ensure I keep doing it. And of course, I also have one more. So this is on Strathmore's new cotton rag watercolor paper. And it was done almost entirely with the Albert Durer watercolor markers. I inked it with pit pens and then I colored the entire thing with the watercolor markers. So you guys will be able to have this tutorial real soon. Or like I said, if you are an art nerd on Patreon, you got it already. On that note, in the live stream, we did a lot of swatching. On different kinds of paper, like the Strathmore Tone Tan Mixed Media Paper that you guys hear. So over here, I swatched the Albrecht Durer watercolor markers. And then on the other side, I swatched the Albrecht Durer watercolor pencils. I think it's really important to swatch products on different papers before you try them, before you sink into something bigger. So you guys can also see here, I have swatches on the Strathmore uh, cotton rag paper as well. So it sounds like we've already covered a lot of ground, right? We have a lot of tutorials coming up. We've got a lot of swatches that have already been done on the live stream. So what are we doing today? Well, I wanted to do kind of a, a reverse unbox and swatch. So this is unusual for me. I already have a lot of experience with this product. So I guess really this is more of like an overview. So what I want to do is I want to demonstrate how these products handle, talk about some of the pros and the cons of these watercolor markers, talk about some ways I think Faber-Castell could improve them in the future, and this will give you guys something to look forward to when the tutorials go live. So, okay, what is Hands-On Creativity? Hands-On Creativity is this amazing event put on by Plaza Artist Materials, which is a chain of art supply stores in kind of the east, eastern part of the U.S., and it is literally a hands-on two-day event. So all sorts of different art supply manufacturers and art supply vendors come to demonstrate, to put on workshops, and to let you play with their amazing art supplies. This is a great opportunity to learn about what's coming out and what's brand new. Now, since I teach with Plaza, I teach some of the classes aimed at a younger demographic, so I teach the Copic Marker classes, I teach a figure drawing class aimed at making comics and drawing figures for comics, and and I'm teaching a watercolor class aimed at illustration. Since I do a lot of stuff for younger folks, Plaza asked if I'd be interested in tabling with them, talking about my classes, and maybe demonstrating some materials. So they put me in, in contact with Strathmore. So I got a bunch of awesome Strathmore papers. That's why I did that big Strathmore unboxing for you guys. And y'all look, I love Strathmore papers. I've been using Strathmore papers for years. And Strathmore and Canton recently got purchased by Tikaronda, the pencil company. So this means that Strathmore and Canton are going to be distributed by the same company. And this also includes Arches, or Arch as some people pronounce it. So most of our major watercolor papers are all going to be coming out from one source. So um, not only did I partner with Strathmore, but I was later contacted to see if I'd be interested in partnering with Faber-Castell. So the thing about partnering with Faber-Castell is they wanted me to work exclusively with their products with the exclusion of the paper so it means I got to spend a lot more time with just Faber-Castell products than I normally would now they sent me a 10 color set of the Albert Durer watercolor markers and I specially requested to be sent the markers because I really wanted to try them I've wanted to try them since they were announced in September so they sent me a 10 piece set and I was also given a 24 piece set of the watercolor pencils and the polychromos color pencils and I augmented it with my own Faber-Castell supplies that were purchased over the years. So you see here a 20 piece set. I was later upgraded to that as the weekend progressed. 
So I'm gonna drop a little bit of knowledge on y'all. These are fairly new watercolor markers. They are pigment-based watercolor markers. And this is real interesting because Winsor & Newton is pulling their pigment-based watercolor markers off the market. So these are actually coming on right as Winsor & Newton is leaving. And I plan on doing a side-by-side -side comparison for y'all coming up really soon. And if you wanna see that happen sooner, you can join me on Patreon. But, um, so these are pigment-based, but they're not pigment-based the way we normally think of pigment-based watercolors. They are India ink-based, which is something that Faber-Castell has not promoted yet. In fact, most of the Faber-Castell products are going to be India ink based. And one of the reasons this is really cool is you can get a lot of colors with India ink. Bombay India inks kind of show the wide diversity in color. And um, with the Faber-Castell India ink products, they're going to be less prone to fading. So you can get some really brilliant, bright colors, but you don't have to worry about fading as much as you would with dye-based products like Copic markers or Prismacolor markers or Echoline dye-based watercolor markers. So um, these are a great way to get some really bright, brilliant, beautiful, intense colors without worrying about fading. Now something I know you guys have already noticed and I wanna talk about it before, before I stress any of y'all out, cause I know some of y'all get stressed and leave comments before we get through the video. So I'm gonna do it now, is you guys might have noticed that we have about 40 colors on this page and about 20 colors on this page. So like way more than the number of markers in each set. So what ends up happening, and this is really common from pigment-based watercolor markers like the Winsor & Newton watercolor markers that are actually about to be pulled off the market, but don't worry, I'm going to do a comparison of the two before that. But anyway, so we have a brush tip and we have a bullet tip and the pigment reaches one tip better than it reaches the other tip. So we have pigment flow issues. Now this is something that could be addressed by creating a pump action, kind of like other brands, and I'll show you guys that in a minute. But the thing is, these things are built really, really well. The brush is built well. The plastic that they use is really nice. The build quality is nice. So it's a shame that we do have these flow issues. In fact, one of the other demonstrators at Hands On Creativity was like, really kind of mad at it, like coming at me kind of mad at it. So um, this is an issue that I wanted to point out to you guys so it doesn't take you by surprise. I think this sort of disclosure is important. So there are two of two versions of the Faber-Castell watercolor markers. The only main difference is the body striping. So you see on the pink marker, the beige marker, you have a thick line and a thin line. The thick line indicates a brush tip. The thin line indicates um, a bullet tip. The other markers do not have this sort of indication. And I'm really hoping those are the older bodies because I really like that indication. I find it really helpful. So Faber-Castell, if you are taking away that indication, please give it back. The stripey markers, okay, when you use the brush tip, you get a darker version of the color than what you get with the bullet tips, which tells me we have a pigment flow issue. However, with the new, I say new, with the unbanded ones, you have a lighter version of the color with the brush tip than you do with the bullet tip. So I don't really use bullet tips all that much anyway. I find they're scratchy. I find they tear up the paper. So like, I'm probably never really going to use the bullet tips even for fine details. But I have some thoughts on this. So like me as somebody who uses pigment-based marker products, who likes pigment-based water marker products, this is a common problem. I have seen lots of companies make this mistake. So I'm just used to it. I just expect it. Um, so it was pointed out to me by someone else who was really upset about this. I mean, she was furious and she was kind of mad at me. And I was like, whoa, lady, I'm not the Faber rep. I'm just an artist. Um, so this is going to bother the heck out of some people. It doesn't bother me. I'm used to this, but maybe I'm just used to it. I don't know. But I want you guys to know. So you could think of it a couple ways. Yeah, you could think of it as color ins inconsistency, not enough pigment flow to both tips. That is a fair way to think about it. You could also think about this as being a twin tip product. So while these are still new and while Faber-Castell is kind of keeping an eye on my channel, I want to ask you guys to do one of two things. I would love to see you guys make these pump action watercolor markers, kind of like, and I have one with me here. 
the Molotov Graphics Aqua Ink Soft Pump Liner. So the way this works is you, and I'm not gonna do it because this one is overly juicy, you pump it in and it will increase the ink flow to the tip that you just pumped. So there's a few dye-based watercolor markers that utilize this, but I don't know of any pigment-based watercolor markers that utilize this. And it's something that I'd really love to see, and I really think it could help solve some of our flow issues, our pigment issues, if you will, with these markers. Because otherwise, I think they're built really great. Something else I'd really like to see, and I'm going to go over this more later on, is I would love it if these markers were refillable, because the build quality, the plastic they use is really, really nice. Nice, and it would be nice if these are markers that could really last the way like Copic markers last where you might buy a Copic marker and replace the nib and refill the marker several times but you're never actually replacing the marker itself so you're not putting more plastic into a landfill so it's probably not feasible with these markers especially if these markers um, have a felt core on the inside rather than that liquid like we saw with the Molotov marker where you could just pour more liquid in but echo line markers are dye based markers now they're not pump action but they do have a felt wick inside and they are also refillable so I'd really love to see Faber Castell release a line of inks that are designed to go with the Faber Castell color system designed to refill fill the Faber-Castell watercolor markers, so water-soluble India inks that are color-coded to match. This would also be really useful if we needed to, say, cover a really large area with color, or you wanted to use an atomizer, or you wanted to spray mist your color on. So um, you guys have probably noticed the significant differences in colors between the brush tips and the bullet tips. As I pointed out before, this isn't an uncommon problem with watercolor markers, but I think it would be easily solved with a pump action that would allow us to progress more pigment or India ink to the other end. Okay, so now that we talked about the elephant in the room, let's just talk about these markers. So like I said, they are twin tipped. You get a brush tip and it is a compressed fiber brush, but it's one of the better compressed fiber brushes I've encountered. It isn't a particular flexible brush, and I'll show you guys what I mean in a moment, but it's a very durable brush. And then you also get a bullet nib, and honestly, y'all, like, this bullet nib does not impress me all that much. It's a bullet nib. I never like bullet nibs. So, you know, but this could be a great removable nib that you could put in other types of nibs, like maybe a calligraphy nib or a finer brush nib, like what you guys have on the pit pins. Um, so you guys could have a lot of room for a lot of different options. And I gotta tell y'all, artists love options. The more you can customize these, the more we're going to love them and the more artists you're going to be able to reach with these products. So those are some things that I would really like to see Faber-Castell consider in the future for these markers. Hopefully these are going to be a product that they want to support, they want to continue to produce and they want to continue to sell. I could see illustrators, comic artists like myself or younger artists or artists perhaps with say arthritis problems really enjoying these markers. Maybe even artists who are just kind of beginning their watercolor journey, finding these an accessible way to begin with watercolor, to play around with watercolor and to achieve watercolor effects because these markers combine the best traits of both. Okay, so for the purposes of today's demonstration, we're going to be using Canson's watercolor artboard. So this is artboard that has a layer of Canson Montval paper on it. So it is a cellulose watercolor paper and I prefer cellulose papers when I'm using watercolor markers like these. So one of the first methods I want to show you guys is just direct application and blending out with water. So like what we used for our swatches. So I have here purple violet number 136 and you guys will also see if I can get my Camerino to to focus is there are three little asterisks, three little stars. Now this de denotes their highest level of light fastness and this is on a scale of one to three. So I have the camera angle a little bit funky because I want you guys to be able to see the brush. So there is our brush. I'm applying a fair amount of pressure. 
you can see it's soft enough to give, but it's not the sort of flex one would get with like um, a super nib or a compressed foam sort of nib. And then we're just gonna do a water application. I'm gonna try to dissolve the whole thing. Now, one of the things I like about these markers is you don't necessarily get the harsh line that you would get with um, other watercolor markers, depending on the paper that you're using. So now we're gonna swatch with the bullet nib. And as you guys can see, it, put, it puts down a lot more, a lot darker color than the brush tip did and it's going to be a little bit less blendable you'll still see kind of that harsh original application line even though even when we blend it out with water so you guys can kind of see why the brush tip on these is definitely my preference over the bullet tip working with that technique let's do some color blending and since my markers were being used as the demo markers all weekend they're all out of color or order but that is actually kind of a good thing because it allows me to speak to you guys about how durable these markers are all right so these were out all weekend so saturday and sunday nine hours a day little like from nine o'clock in the morning to four in the afternoon and there were little kids just like going to town with these markers treating them like they would their Crayolas and we didn't tell them like oh be gentle or anything like that we were just like yeah go to town with it we weren't telling them not to mix like black and yellow using the yellow marker I mean these kids were doing some downright cringy things with these watercolor markers and y'all these markers held up I mean, mine are starting to look a little bit banged up. It's because we had three and four year olds treating these things like they were their own. And I know the parents, the sitters, the teachers in the audience know exactly what I'm talking about. So I feel like if these can things can stand up to a well-intentioned three year old who just loves the pretty color, they're gonna stand up to whatever we as adults are gonna throw at them. All right, so that is going to be direct color into color blending. And you guys see that I'm very easily able to blend out using the lighter, the next lightest color. Now there are 30 total colors in this collection. So now I'm going to demonstrate blending out using just water rather than going color to color. So I'm avoiding doing too much color overlap. Now, if I were doing this for something I was creating, as I'll show you guys when we do another exercise a little bit later on, I would definitely overlap my colors. But this is something that I see a lot of beginner artists use. They don't overlap their colors and they, then they expect it to blend perfectly using just water. So we're going to use a clean brush and a clean cup of water and I'm just going to apply the water straight across the paints. So I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but I'm having a lot of recording problems where my audio gets dropped out halfway. And this is the first chance I had to explain in this video. So for every clip I do, I have to re-record the back half of the audio, which makes it very difficult to do on box and swatches like this one. So that's one of the reasons I haven't been doing as many reviews lately until I get this problem sorted. All right, so now I am kind of creating a layered application just to show you guys how you can build up color and build up pigment over time so I directly applied my yellow and blended it out I'm going to allow it to dry and then come back to it So another form of application, and I really like this with darker colors, is applying them to a non-porous surface. So like a craft sheet, a piece of scrap plastic, a ceramic plate, and picking it up with a brush. These are really saturated colors. So you can see here by picking it up from the non-porous craft mat, we're able to get a pastel of this really rich saturated red. So this is a great way to develop and to build up colors and to use these markers in a slightly more usable form. So 
it is raining buckets outside right now and this is damp slash cool to the touch and normally if i'm using watercolor water-based markers anything that uses water as our solvent i'm not gonna go over a damp area because it tends to lead to paper abrasion but for the purposes of time we'll do that today and i do want to point out that one or two layers isn't going to tear up your paper with these brush pens and then i use a little bit of water to blend that out Okay, so I've sorted my colors into a beautiful rainbow of color. And normally, you guys know, I would do a rainbow road blend for you guys. But the wonderful Miss Jill has pointed out that she actually finds the color ball blends to be more useful. So I think I want to do both for y'all, partially because I want... I personally want to do a rainbow road blend to see how well the 24 color set blends into each other. But I also think Jill has an excellent point that doing a color, a blended color ball is kind of the best way to figure out how well these colors play together. So we're starting with our rainbow road and this is being done in time lapse and we are blending back out with the next lightest color and this is a really helpful tip that works well with alcohol markers as well as with water based markers so it's just something helpful to keep in mind. I've also rearranged my color order so it reflects our rainbow and this is going to allow me to select my colors a little bit more easily. I've always been kind of persnickety when it comes to color. Uh, I was that kid who would rearrange her 96 crayons and then not let anybody borrow them because it's going to mess up the order so just kind of keep that in mind I guess. But I feel like art nerds are kind of the same kind of people so I bet like 20 of y'all were just like relating really hard to that statement. So I find that these are actually really easy to blend into one another when they're um, when we're just doing color into color. This does not come with a colorless blender set. When it comes to watercolor markers, uh, colorless blenders are usually just a water glycerin mixture in an empty marker. So um, they're basically everything but the coloring agent in the pen. So um, I don't necessarily really feel like I need one for these. Water seems to do the trick and they honestly blend really well into each other. So um, that's not necessarily something I'm missing. Maybe some lighter versions of some of these colors would be helpful so that we could blend back out to zero, blend back out to white or build up from white. Um, but since they are so water soluble, that's not really the biggest concern ever. So you guys probably have noticed that even within the 24 set, there's not a lot of skin tones. This is really more of like a basic primary color set. So if you are the sort of person who likes to draw birds or you like to draw flowers, um, bright, intense, colorful things, this set has got you covered. Now, there are some colors that would function as skin tones, um, particularly the India Red red is really nice and the sepia I use the heck out of that in a upcoming tutorial that you guys can check out really soon or hey if you're an art nerd you can check it out right now if you wish um but as you can see the colors blend into each other pretty nicely we don't have any real major gaps between different colors and that's something I'm really looking for if I'm reviewing a 24 set of colors Okay, so now we're going to do the blended color ball. And for this, I've selected about five colors that I thought would work well for this. Several yellows, a couple reds, and then a purple. So the colors I'm using for this are cadmium yellow, that's number 107. Dark chrome yellow, number 109. Orange glaze, 113. Then pale geranium lake, number 121. Pink carmine and then finally we're going to be ending with 
purple violet number 136. So that is a pretty wide gamut to try to blend to. And I'm trying to use as many different blending techniques on this bowl as possible. Now, I have mentioned it like 16 times today, so I do apologize, but it is nasty wet out. And it's taking a really, really long time for this to evaporate into the atmosphere. I like went and made lunch, I did the dishes, I turned on the air purifier to kind of cycle the air out. Um, I'm pointing this out because I end up doing some techniques and over rendering the paper and tearing up the paper surface a bit more than I wanted to. And this was a problem that didn't pop up when I was making any of those other illustrations that I showed you guys. So I think if it's a really, really wet day, direct application like you guys see me doing here is not going to be your friend because the paper surface is still going to be really wet and vulnerable. And this is a really common problem with water-based markers, watercolor markers. You guys have heard me complain about it a lot. And this is why I really favor the indirect application method as like our best way to build up colors because it's least likely to tear up the paper. And you guys see me blending color into color, going over the same small area over and over and over again. That's really tearing up the paper surface. Now, at first, I thought it was just a buildup of the India ink pigments because the paper surface, the Montval paper surface, doesn't really seem to be that chewed up or damaged. But um, I'm not really sure where the extra smutch is coming from because the paper surface doesn't seem to be that torn up, but I'm pretty sure we ended up abrading the paper surface with this. So I just wanted to point this out so you guys could be aware. And this is a really common problem. This would be way worse if we use the bullet tips. And it's why I don't like using bullet nibs just for water-based markers in general because they're very prone to tearing up the paper. These brushes, even though they're fiber-based, they are very well-made, soft fiber. We didn't have any problems with tearing or splitting or fraying over the weekend. And they're not quite as gentle as foam rubber, but they're pretty close. Okay, so some of you guys might notice this copious amounts of schmutz at the center of our ball. We were able to get some pretty good color into color blending, um, but it is a really, really wet day outside today. And I didn't necessarily want to rely heavily on developing our color through um, just uh, indirect application. So I tried to demonstrate a few different ways to apply color. So what I'm doing now is I want to see if the schmutz is actually the paper surface abraded, which it seems to be a little bit or if it's what I originally kind of thought was maybe it is a buildup of the India ink. But as we can see now that we've wet it, it's really just paper abrasion. So part of this is part due to the fact that it is so wet outside. It does kind of tear up the paper surface a little because I can't get it to dry fast enough. So um, this is going to be a your mileage may vary sort of situation. And you guys will see in some of the other tutorials that I have coming up with these markers, this isn't always a problem. In fact, it's often rarely a problem. This is the first time I've encountered it. And I've done like five pieces with those markers. So um, I'm pointing this out too for, you know, the sake of disclosure, the sake of honesty. I would hate to recommend something that has like a known flaw to it. And I also just think that artists need to know about these sort of things so we can make better choices. But you can see adding just a little bit of water, they all reactivated and um, they blended out. So you could really continue once you remove all this paper schmutz, you could really continue to work this piece and develop those colors until you get the blending and the intensity that you want. Now I'm gonna point out again, third time's a charm. It is a super duper wet day. So generally I would do just that. I would continue to develop it to show you guys how much these can be blended, but I feel like I would spend the next six hours waiting on this to dry. And that's just absolutely not feasible for me. So hopefully this and some of the tutorials that have already been re released or that, I, that are scheduled to be released soon will give you guys the information that you need. Okay, so let's talk about price for these watercolor markers. Price is gonna vary 
wildly. So at Hands-On Creativity, the open stock markers were being sold for $5.99 each and there was a 40% discount going on. So that would have been a great day to buy these markers. Um, on Blick, they go for around, around $3.59 each-ish. I purchased some open stock from Blick because I needed some skin tones and those didn't even arrive until after Hands-On Creativity. And then I ended up with a bunch of duplicates um, since I was, uh, since they switched me out for the 20 color set. So, um, and then on Amazon, on the Faber-Castell Amazon portal, even one marker can go for as much as $10.99, whereas the sets are competitively priced with Blick and Plaza. So I'm going to link several sites where you can buy them. I recommend that you shop around. I will caveat and say if you buy from the Amazon affiliates link, I do see a small bounty from that and you don't pay any additional money. So if they happen to be the best price and you use that link, you're helping to support this channel. And I wanna thank you so much for that support. So speaking of open stock, I do have two open stock markers. I have the beige red and I have the sanguine color. So I'm going to swatch those for you guys. The beige red is kind of a skin tone. It's definitely a beige red. And then when you blend it out a little bit, you get kind of a peachy skin tone. So I would really like to see Faber release more skin tone colors for the set, different types of skin tones. I know they can be good with skin tones because their red line stuff, their kids line stuff, can be really great when it comes to skin tones. And then there's Sanguine, which is kind of like a burnt sienna color. I happen to really like burnt sienna. So maybe a more yellow influenced skin tone added to the lineup would be really helpful. I'll go ahead and swatch yellow ochre since I usually use yellow ochre mixed with a little bit of scarlet red when I'm doing Caucasian skin tones. And we also have an Indian red and a sepia that I'll swatch for you guys. So that is the yellow ochre. And we're gonna do Indian red. So for me, wanting more skin tones and wanting more pastels, and we'll talk about that a little bit more a little bit later on. Uh, those are definitely two areas that I want to see Faber explore, especially if they want these markers to do well with the illustration market. Now, I can't really speak to the fine art market. I don't do fine art. The kind of watercolors I do, most watercolor artists don't consider that watercolor either. So all I can speak to is comic art and to illustration. So that is the dark sepia. And that's basically what we have for skin tones right now. So before we say goodbye, I want to talk about pros and cons for the new Faber-Castell Albrecht Durer watercolor markers. Let's start with the cons and end with the what I want to see in the future. So my cons are these are not currently refillable and currently they don't have replaceable nibs. Maybe these are like the pit pins where once the nib gets all wrecked, you can pull it out and flip it over and replace it. We'll see, hopefully someone from Faber will reach out to me and let me know if that's the case or maybe later on I may experiment with that. There's little to no granulation. The colors can start to feel kind of dead the way colors sometimes feel dead with ink tense products. And this is a common issue for anything with India ink as the pigmentation. So I don't necessarily see this as a huge con. It's not the fault of Faber-Castell. It's just kind of how those products tend to work. And as you guys saw, the, uh, the bullet nib abrades the per paper surface. You guys also saw the brush nib abrade the per paper surface and that was the first time in several illustrations and in two full days of swatching and playing with these markers that that happened and I think it's an environmental issue in this instance. So my pros are, these are super portable. They're very easy to use. These could be amazing for younger artists. So like teenagers who wanna get into watercolor or people with dexterity problems who are looking for something that's a little bit easier to use or someone who's coming into watercolor later in life and they want a really easy start to watercolor. These could be perfect for them. And you're also not going to have to worry about light fast issues. So these could also be really good for schools, especially Especially if you make them refillable and you give them replaceable nibs, they would be ideal for school. 
Um, they're very little mess. They're very self-contained, so they travel really well. I imagine getting like a hairdresser's apron, like a bandolier, and just popping my markers in that, and then going off to Cheekwood to do some field sketching. So I may bring these with me. Now, one con I didn't mention, but I'm hoping to see it kind of fixed in the near future is I just don't really like the packaging. I don't like throwaway packaging and I would love to see these in like a wallet or some kind of case like that. So that's something for Faber to definitely consider and I know that they consider things like that with their other products so I have full faith that they may consider that for these as well. These can be used in a variety of ways. You can use them as watercolor, you can use them as markers, you can use them as watercolor markers. They could be good for sketching, they could be good for just toning and monochrome studies. These are very very flexible as you guys could see with some of the illustrations that I showed you at the beginning of the video. They are great as a marker and they're decent as watercolor. Ink flow keeps up with movement. We don't get a lot of streaking. Coverage is good. We can um, we can blend them color into color. They're very usable markers. And as watercolors, my only real complaint is what I mentioned earlier and that's just something native to India ink products. Um, there's a very forgiving brush tip. Now, these aren't even the ones that I've used to death, but they've seen a fair amount of use. And as I mentioned earlier, some very young children go into town with them and they've held up well. Um, there are 30 total colors, so I'd like to see more skin tones. I'd like to see them expand on this color range and perhaps really market to illustrators and comic artists. We always like being acknowledged as actually existing. They're available in sets or in open stock, so you can kind of curate your collection to what you need. And if they do release more skin tones, I'd love to see them do a skin tone set for us comic folks, us portrait folks. And they play really well as a mixed media product, particularly with other Faber-Castell products. And this is in part to that handy color numbering system. So what I'd like to see Faber improve on for these is I'd like to see more skin tones and pastels. I want a white water soluble watercolor marker. I think I've mentioned that in literally every video I've done with these and the unboxing. And I recently found out that pit pins do come in a smaller version of the white opaque pit pin. So I have faith that they're gonna be able to do that with these as well. I want a pump action, like I showed you guys way earlier in the video with the soft liner. I want a pump action so I can force more pigment to the front of the marker, to the tip that I'm using so I can flood areas with colors. And I would love to see a refillable version of these markers. So that is about it for my overview slash review of the new Faber-Castell Albrecht Dürer watercolor markers. I hope you guys found this helpful, useful, and informative. If you like what I do, there's so many ways you can help me continue to do what I'm doing. You can subscribe, you can click the bell notification, you can write into companies on my behalf and let them know how much you enjoy my reviews and maybe link them a specific one because customer word of mouth is pretty important with some of these companies. You could comment and let me know how much the work I do means to you and how much I've helped you. You can recommend my videos and my written tutorials to friends. Make sure you tag me at NatoSoup because honestly, I can't say this enough and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. It truly makes my day. It truly makes my day when I see someone recommend something that I've spent time on, that I've worked hard on to another person in real time. Like y'all don't even know. Y'all may know I deal with depression, anxiety, and self-worth issues. And when you guys sincerely recommend what I do, to someone else and I can actually see it, you guys are giving me a reason to continue doing this. So that means the world to me and I really do need your help to continue to grow this channel and that is the best way to do it. Positive word of mouth is the best way way to help me. You can also help by joining me over on Patreon at patreon.com slash natosoup. That financial help helps me dedicate time to doing things like this. So I don't have to take a thousand terrible gig jobs that don't pay a whole lot of money. It allows me to dedicate time to doing this. It allows me to purchase the materials that I need and it gives me the flexibility to be able to create content. Not only that, but joining me over on Patreon gives you early access to videos like this one and so many more. It also gives you early access or exclusive access to many of my classes that you can take at your own pace or you can join me in my Discord 
channel and I have links to that over on my Patreon for curated help and guidance from me. So if you're looking to improve your art, joining me on Patreon and then joining us in the Discord channel is a great way to do that on a very tight budget. It starts at just $2 a month and it goes a long way towards feeding Bowie and keeping my lights on. You can also read my comic, 7-Inch Kara. It is free at 7inchkara.com and 7inchkara.tumblr.com. And I'd love to know what you guys think about it. It's kind of my portfolio. I do have a portfolio, but it's kind of like what I consider my real portfolio because it is my comic. And I have the second volume of 7-Inch Kara coming out really soon. So keep an ear out for a Kickstarter announcement about that. Anyway, it was a pleasure sharing these markers with you guys, sharing my experiences with with you guys and if you found this video to be helpful useful and informative let me know down in the comments below leave a like or tell me what you enjoyed about this video and consider sharing it with your friends who might also enjoy it as well thank you guys so much have a wonderful day guys bye